We're talking about financial fair play. Is it a good thing or a bad thing? Would you like to see it scrapped? Obviously, if you're a Chelsea fan, don't bother phoning up. It doesn't apply to your club. Lee's a Man City fan. Hello, Lee. Evening, chaps. You all right? I'm good. How are you? You're good, mate. Yeah, good. Thank you. Financial fair play. So you're a City fan, so it doesn't really apply to you either, does it? <laughs> Honestly. Well, yeah, I mean, obviously, it goes without saying that as a City fan, I, I have issues around financial fair play, but not just for the reasons that our club is obviously embroiled in all of the kind of the, 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 the fuss around it. The thing for me about it is, is twofold. Firstly, it's clearly been set up originally to protect clubs from new mm-hmm. clubs entering the title race and, mm-hmm. and potentially having a greater opportunity to take things away from those clubs that have built their infrastructure around that revenue. So that, for me, is, is the wrong basis for it in the first place. But if you add to that the fact that um, the way that you can get around financial fair play, so you can have a club like United, okay, who can work around financial fair play using debt, can borrow money against the club. People who don't have the money to buy the football club can borrow it against the club they're actually trying to buy, and that's okay. Yeah, an owner like we've got at Man City who's been... Hold on, hold on, sorry, sorry. Say that, say that again, Lee, say that again. So, Matt, you're so talking about the Glazers. They bought the club and then moved the debt from one business to another. Well, they bought the Glazers borrowing money secured against the football club that they were actually trying to buy. Right. So 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 effectively that's not their money. They haven't put their own money into that football club. No, they but it's it. No, but it's it's like you know, they wouldn't have got that loan unless they had that money somewhere else in other businesses, right? Yeah, no, they so they've got the money. They've got the money in the background, but they haven't used their own money. They yes. haven't used their own leverage yes. to get it. Okay. Yes. So so and now what we see now is, you know, hundreds and hundreds of millions worth of debt and repayments and huge amounts of repayments going in, and, and hence the issues at the football club. We've got the polar opposite, the other side of Manchester, where the club has zero debt. It's be- Yes, absolutely, we won the lottery as a football club. Our ownership is fantastic. Not every club gets that opportunity. I appreciate it. But why, yes, sorry, why is financial fair play, play, why is it anti-competition? Because ultimately, and I think you were touching on it before, Unless the football club can get themselves into the position where they can earn the revenue to be able to compete with those clubs, you can never break in. So you can't you can't spend the money to become competitive in the Premier League to break into those top level clubs. So actually to actually then start to earn the revenue that only those top football clubs can actually generate. You talk Lee, you talk about like you talk about like Champions League and things like that. Champions League, you know, prize money, TV money at the top level, all of those things that all make the difference between what you can spend and what you can't spend. Would you like to see it scrap, Lee, financial fair play? A hundred, hundred, in its current format, 100%. I do believe there has to be things to protect the game. Sure. But in its current format, this is not it. OK, Lee, good call. Thank well, you for that. Really Let's speak call. to Alex, a Chelsea fan. Hi, Alex. How are you doing? I'm good. I'm very well. How are you today? Yeah, good, thank you. Good, good show as always, guys. Thanks, thank man. You. Very um, kind. You're a, Ch- you're a Chelsea fan. This will be a fun conversation. <laughs> well, yeah, yeah. I mean, I think Simon Jordan did all the speaking that, that all, all, any fan could look for because he, he explained it very well. Um, whether or not there was a few holes in his argument, who knows. But um, the, the, the one thing I wanted to point out from a, from a sort of universal point of view is that the, the financial fair play system does do its job in terms of stopping clubs spending outrageous money every single week and every single day of the transfer window. But what, what, what I would like to see happen is that if a threshold gets met of maybe, I don't know, 40 million, 50 million, what would then have to do is the club would then have to do some sort of parachute payment or levy, which would then go to the EFL. So all the lower league clubs in the EFL would benefit from these mega transfer signings. Um, and that way the distribution of wealth would be a lot more transparent and a lot more fair throughout the leagues and that would solve a lot of problems these lower league clubs in league one and league two if they're getting payments of a hundred thousand two hundred thousand on a, a weekly basis from these mega signings that can make or break their season what you, you mean, mean like there'd be a transfer tax yes if you buy someone for yeah. 50 million pound a percentage of that fee will go to lower league football i think so and grassroots football yeah i think that's the only way that people would get on board with it a bit more i think it's the only way the game would survive long term with, this, with these kind of mega box deals. Well, What's so Alex? So you're talking about say if Manchester City bought Mbappe for 100 million, a percentage of that would filter down the football pyramid. Correct. Yeah, correct. And that yeah. way, that way, everyone benefits from these mega signings and not just the big clubs and the big agents. Yeah, I mean, yeah. listen, it, it's a great idea. It's get, it's it will getting, probably never happen. It's, but it's, it's getting the football clubs to agree to that. Yeah, and Premier League, etc. Yeah, I mean, yeah. 
But I mean, it is difficult. I mean, when you, but, but, when you lower league clubs, like, obviously, are struggling. Unless they get to the Premier League, which is the promised land, a lot of these clubs are absolutely just yeah, struggling. But, but if, if let's just say it was five percent, right? Yeah. If Man City bought Mbappe for hundred million, yeah, five million of that, they're going. So it's going to cost them another five million, hundred and five million, yeah, and five million goes to the league. Football. It's a lovely idea. Uh, Andrew's a Spurs fan. Hi, Andrew. How you doing, guys? You're right? good great. show as usual. Thanks, man. Off you go. Um, yeah, yeah. It's just there, um, quick. When you're talking about the financial fair play, you mentioned earlier if a club the size of Brentford um, was bought by a multi-billionaire uh, consortium or owner, or whatever, they wouldn't be able to spend. You're 100 percent right because what's happened with the financial fair play? It was originally looking at it and your previous call not the one just gone the one before that he kind of um, touched on it as well that it's really been brought in for the the top two clubs of each of the best leagues um, when it originally came out so originally it was for your Liverpools your Man United it was for your Barcelona's your Real Madrid's AC Milan to Inter stop them Milan, getting bigger those clubs. <laughs> exactly no, no to keep them at the top and keep everyone else um, down the bottom so no one else is going to touch those clubs. So now, it doesn't, it, you, Newcastle, Newcastle got the richest owners ever, but they can't go out and That's spend right. big. They can't go out and spend big because they're not bringing in enough revenue. And they're never really going to be, be able to bring in that revenue and, until how many years? Now, a club like Man United, if Man United were to get those um, Qatar owners... Oh my gosh, they'd be able to go and spend on an enormous scale because of the revenue that they're bringing in. But you say, Andrew, you say that. Up. You say that. I, my understanding is Man United couldn't spend more than 200 million in this window because of financial fair play regulations. So even if they were bought out by a Qatari who's got gazillions, they, that still wouldn't affect the amount of money they could spend in this window. Well, I don't know. There's loopholes ab- around it. And I think, you know. Yeah, but they'd be the me, same one for Newcastle, think- wouldn't they? Say that again. There'd be, if there's loopholes, they'd be the same ones for Newcastle. But there are. But it all depends on how you want to run your club. Now, obviously, Newcastle have come in. Their owners want to run it and do things in the right way. They want to do it in the right way. Um, Chelsea are finding the loop. Chelsea's more established in that sense, but they're trying to find the loopholes around it. And I don't blame them. I'm a Tottenham fan, yeah, but I still I still don't blame them just trying to find it because I think it is been just been brought in mm. to benefit certain clubs. I think I think you're right. It has my, yeah. my own, thanks for your it. My only concern, if I was a Chelsea fan, was it's a dangerous game to play, in my opinion. Chelsea given these eight and nine year deals because it, let's just say Mudrick, right? He's on an eight year deal. Yeah. I think he's on 150 grand a week. Let's they, say they also extended Enzo, didn't they? By one for another year, yeah. If after two years, right, the manager doesn't fancy them, they're not playing that great. There's no way they'll be able to shift them, right? Because another club is no is going to go nowhere near the amount of money they're currently on, mm. and they've got them for another six, seven years. Yeah. So I, I just, I, if I was a chess fan, I'd worry that in three or four years you're going to have this group of players they can't get off the books that are earning crazy money that's going to affect their spending. Then yeah, but also on the flip side, on the plan devil's advocate, maybe in a few years' time, two, three years' time, you've got a, a group of young, hungry players that are still together that are gelling as a team. So you've got you've got the nucleus. So if something bad was to happen and they were to go right transfer ban, they've already got the squad set for the next. Look, Elise Young, Mudrick Young, Jackson Young. They've got all, all Reese James. Yeah, but if the manager all, all doesn't young. fancy them, they're going to be sat in the stands, can't what, sell what, them. Yeah, but what manager's there for for a long period? Like these are the players you've got to work with. There you go. Mm. They're all good players. Talk Sport Drive with Andy Goldstein. Monday to Friday afternoon from 4 on AM, on DAB, via the Talk Sport app and on your smart speaker. Talk Sport.